Hey guys, this is Anthony again. Week 8, and we had another Ivan Franco reading. I can honestly say this is a lot easier. But also a lot more interesting though, because it was a little bit easier to follow along with the reading. It wasn't, it wasn't really that confusing overall. I pretty much understood everything that was going on. And then I just, I just came up with some answers to the questions, you know. So question one, the Montes stole the entire temporarily available exhibition surface from the website hell.com and republished it on 01.org. So what do I think what they were trying to say about copyright and ownership as it relates to art and the internet? Well, when it in that in terms of that, pretty much it's saying like copyrights are useless because it really didn't serve a purpose and it, sh it shouldn't really be an issue because when it comes to like putting stuff on the internet anyone has access to it and when, and when it comes to art, art is no exception and when it when something as soon as something comes on the like on the web internet whatever it should be available to everybody even if it's even if it's just art like if that's what they're you and Franco were trying to do in terms of like what they were tra uh, stealing the the gallery and like how like how Matei said we just we just work with what we find and try to tra transmit it transmit and propagate their ideas so basically it's it's really no harm man so this way I see it the copyrights aren't really a problem that's just kind of like the, the sense that I kind of got with with that part with that question <clears throat> question two what are the differences between hacktivism and Ivan Franco's theft on hell.com's exhibition well, even Franco only meant to focus on those concepts that they have talked about, like originality, reproduction, copyright, and plagiarism, stuff like that. Whereas, hacktivism is it's using those concepts to take down like some kind of company or like organization, corporation. Basically, what they were trying to do with the copy with the copyright and the plagiarism concepts that they were talking about, it kind of really didn't serve like a major purpose. Whereas if you're gonna take part in like hacktivism, it would like you use that to your advantage in some way, in terms of like bringing someone down, something down. So and kind of like I kind of saw it as basically like awareness versus action, attack, kind of like that. So question three: What are my thoughts on their Nike swoosh project? And was it any less offensive when I learned about what it was really supposed to be? I originally I thought it was like a pretty clever idea in terms like in terms of like making it into like a piece of art because I I kind of got the sense that it was gonna be art right away since that's what really what Ivan Franco was trying to do, right? So I would not but before that I wouldn't I didn't know that Nike was actually planning to buy buy well not I don't know buy but kinda like own a section of v Vienna, Karl Platz. I don't know if I'm saying it right. So basically I saw it as like kinda like a sign against those corporations, kinda like how that question was part of that question. And I was never actually offended by this project. I actually thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> but basically it it I don't know I don't know if I'm saying this right but basically the Montez is uh, a Nike ground project kind of like saved the little town square because if who wouldn't know because corporations today like especially in, here in the US they're taking you can say they're taking over because practically they run they run like basically like what we buy and what we sell and all that stuff if that would have happened over there who knows what Nike could have done in though in the reality of it well not necessarily reality, but kind of like what could have happened, right? So basically, they helped save the town. That's the way I see it. Little square, whatever. And so, question four: How is the Second Life avatar like a portrait? How is it different? Well, how is it like a portrait? Well, basically, you're kind of like creating an image 
of of someone or of yourself, kind of like that, because you really are creating like something that you can call either you or that's that's him or her. So you and, and kind of like you're, it's art, obviously. Portraits can be art, just like Second Life avatars. You're creating this, like for say, handsome man or beautiful woman, and and you are the artist, and you're representing that person even if it's that person is you or someone else however it's kind of different also in a sense because this avatar doesn't have to well I said exist but you know what I mean it doesn't have to really represent like that like who you are or what that person is like for example like like I have black hair that doesn't mean I have to make my avatar have black hair or like my personality or someone else's so that's how it's different because it it might be like like a projection of someone doesn't necessarily mean it is the exact projection of someone that's why that's kind of like why I got the the word that they don't have to exist in a sense I don't know if that makes sense what well, kind of it makes sense to me that's the only way I could say it hopefully it does though so, question five what types of concerns are the artists raising in synthetic performances well the original issues were basically kind of like those basic topics like sexuality violence feminism and social space kind of like those those little ideas if that makes any sense but now some of the bigger problems like in terms of plagiarism originality reproductibility and the authenticity are starting to become a problem because what they're, what the Mateys are trying to do, are just basically like, are they? Can we consider this copyright? Are, we, are they plagiarizing this, or are they just reenacting it in a sense? So that's one of the. Those are some of like the bigger issues that arose that arose and kind of like the whole. The other ones like sexuality, violence, they're, they're underlined, but they're still there. All right. So, question six. How do these performances function differently when the participant is aware of the historical precedent compared with the avatars who don't know that's supposed to be art? <coughs> What's well, kind of like black and white, day and night kind of thing, where the people who know <coughs> what these uh, performances are supposed to be about, it's like they, they know the background and they can actually appreciate what they mean what they're supposed to stand for because they already know what's going on the history kind of like what the artist did beforehand what they created <clears throat> and it's, it's kind of like an advantage because it's more interactive now they're, they're not just looking at it but they can actually like act out with it that actual piece in like their second life form and for those that don't really know what they're about it's just like kind of like what is this? This is like this is ridiculous. This as like it's obscene. It's immature. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. That's what they get the sense because they don't know anything about them. That's like how they're talking about a little bit when it comes to like video games. We we automatically judge because we don't know much about it. So that to them it's like a video game, and then what what it what it outright expresses like explicitly that's what they get so that's that's kind of like the I don't know the differences between the people who know what it's supposed to be about versus the people who don't know so question seven what is the Mate's art about are there any teams that write all, that unite all their projects sorry well what they do I kind of saw like a certain theme like what they like using media like something that's already out there and they like they don't copy it but they make it more interactive like how like how kind of like how the, the Iraq war newspaper a while back ago and also the the movie what was it called I forgot the name of the movie but that's pretty much and kind of like the Nike ground project uh, they had gotten word that Nike was was actually planning and they used that to their advantage and the point of all of all what they do is that they want to try to get people to react <clears throat> that's kind of like
what their art is about. They want to. I don't. I want to use the the word awareness because it's not necessarily awareness. It's just some kind of like reaction that makes people think about something. But I don't know if that's kind of the same thing. But that's just the way I see it. Just kind of like people reacting and what and somehow like voicing their opinion also. So question eight. What's the meaning of flogging a dead horse? Well first when I saw when I saw that phrase I thought it was just that song that the Mateys have created, but now I'm not really kinda like too sure. So I kinda think of like it can mean like trying to get people to react. And like when you're when, not just uh, like getting people to react, but kinda like forcing it on them. Basically you're like it sounds really close to like beating a dead horse. It's basically, you're you're getting something bad and just making things worse, kind of like that. But when it comes to like their work, is, uh, uh, I wasn't really sure. I guess they're trying to like tie in what they're trying to do is like trying to their project ideas, basically, because that's what a lot of their concept of work is at. Because they're basically attacking something bad. I guess that's what it means, basically kind of like, like insult to injury also, because you're making, you're there finding bad thing, like bad things, and they're basically, well, to what we see is like some kind of attack on them. Then that kind of like made me think about like that very last comment that Mateus said the other. Mateus, sorry. Well, kind of like at the very end, they were talking about. So I wasn't really sure. That's just a, like question eight's the only one that really, really got to me because I wasn't really sure exactly what he had meant by flogging a dead horse. Basically, the only thing that came up, like I said, was that finding something bad and somehow giving it an even more negative reputation. Kind of like that image. Yeah, that's pretty much all the questions. Like I said, overall, this, this set, the reading for this week was pretty pretty interesting. I got most of it. I got the concept of most of it, unlike the question A, which is the only one I had I had trouble with. But either way, I pretty much got everything. I know we're doing more readings for week nine, and if they're as interesting as this, I think I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with any. The questions that we might have to answer later. So yeah, I'm looking forward to them. See ya.